Hello everyone, the great Dino Ranger here again, back with another review. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Jurassic World Dominion figure. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Jurassic World Dominion Massive Action Quetzalcoatlus. Um, this one I'm also really excited for, just because it is the actual Quetzalcoatlus from the movie. So we have an actual movie Quetzalcoatlus, um, instead of the Dino Rivals version that came out way back in 2019. Um, still a good figure, but now we got an actual movie version, and I'm super excited to take a look at this one. Um, and so the package is just your normal, usual, massive action, Jurassic World Dominion packaging, which is absolutely gorgeous, by the way. And then the Power Raptor, and then more stuff on the back shows that has total wing flapping action, and it can chop, so that's really cool. And then we got the Chiang Chuanosaurus right there. Already did a review on him, so be sure to check that out. And uh, the Mattel logo right there. And that's basically it for the packaging. Um, nothing too much, but uh, yeah, let's take a look, closer look at this giant flying reptile. All right, so here we have the Quetzalcoatlus out of the package. And I really like this figure. Uh, it's pretty much the same size as the other Dino Rivals one, but we'll get into those comparisons later. But I'm just really happy to have an actual movie-accurate Quetzalcoatlus. And I would say this one's probably just a little bit more scientifically accurate than the original one before. But other than that, the it, it looks really nice, and let's take a closer look at it. Um, so here's the head. Uh, the head looks awesome, looks just like the one from the movie, um, which is also why it gives it that scientifically accurate look to it. So the sculpt is really nice on it. Um, and I like the colors, I like the little orange highlights on the around the eye and on the uh, tip of the beak there. And then the bright blue crest looks really nice. Really wish the orange would have continued for the rest of the the beak, but it looks good here, so I won't complain about it too much. Um, but yeah, you got some simple sculpt work around here. It is just like the, the head, the beak area, so there's usually not a lot of stuff going on there. And then we got the bicno fiber fluffy detail on the neck here, which is which actually covers pretty much the whole body. Um, and it looks really nice. The sculpt work looks really nice on it. Very fine, but you can tell it has like this feathery hair like texture to it so it looks really nice um, here at the body you can see there's more of that beautiful uh, picno fiber work going on here and here is the uh, scan code Just in case you guys want that so it's a an open hatch this time instead of taking it out such so interesting um, pretty much like the uh, sun Gariptris. And then here we got more uh, sculpted work down at the bottom. And we got some more on the legs here. And then we got that really nice looking sharp detail on the feet. So like the claws and then on the individual fingers. Looks really nice. Same with uh, the other side. Sculpt work looks amazing on this thing, just like all of other Mattel's figures. And I like the little line sculpt work on the top of the crest there. And here, like on the arms, you got that more detail. And you got that other sharp looking detail on the hands or the fingers right there. And then you got that nice, like, textury, like, vein like. I guess like the vein like textures on the wings, kind of like bats have today so that's really cool it's a really nice touch kind of like a classic for all kinds of like pterosaurs especially from the jurassic park movies yeah and the colors the colors look good just like the movie that light gray the brighter colors in the beak and then you got like these cool brown colored mixes on the on the wings here so yeah, it looks very accurate to the one in the movie, I would say. And I also love, like, here it almost looks like burnt scorch marks, but it's actually um, a different color molded into this lighter plastic, 
which is kind of mixed all around in different places and actually varies between different figures. And to me, I love this because it almost gives it like a dirty, wild animal look to it. And even the, the Yang Chuanasaurus even had this. And I I love I love that um, color, um, whatever you call it, the marbling effect. I like it on these figures. And I even believe the Battle Damage Allosaurus has it. Um, Articulation-wise, you can see that the wings, at least the front part, can fold in and out. And you can also manually move the wings. Um, the legs can also move back and forth. Nothing too crazy, but it's a nice articulation there. And then uh, some action features. We have a button on its back, which controls the flapping mechanism. I always found this part of the Quetzalcoatlus in both variants, actually, um, very kind of hard to control because you got the legs in the way. I think it would have been better if the wings were just articulated instead of having a mechanism. Oh, and then on the neck here, the head can also move up and down, and it can actually rotate all the way around. So that's pretty cool. Something that the other Quetzalcoatlus did not have. So yeah, I guess mechanism-wise, I think the head and the jaw, which here on the bottom, there's a button, and it can control the mouth. And I love how the mouth is already closed and you push the button and it opens i feel like all dinosaur toys should be like that instead of the other way around so yeah this mechanism works the neck one works i would say just kind of switch the flapping action with like articulation that's why i probably like my only gripe about this figure size comparison time so here is our normal owen grady figure and it looks good i the Quetzalcoatlus in the movie was much bigger than this, uh, which would have been cool to have a Quetzalcoatlus like in the T-Rex size range. Um, but I guess I can only dream, right? Uh, but other than that, it, it stands pretty tall when you're comparing it to Owen. I don't even think it's actually even accurate to like the real, real thing, like in real life. It's just a little bit smaller. But, you know, it's a fairly good large-sized pterosaur. I guess it just should have been should have been a little bit bigger. Um, but other than that, it, it works fine. Um, I do love how massive the head is. Like, literally the entire length of the head is just as tall as Owen. Maybe even a little bit over, if you count, like, the, uh, the back of the head there. But, uh, yeah, it's a... Um, uh, scales very nicely now we're going to compare it to the older 2019 Quetzalcoatlus figure from Mattel obviously this was way before uh, we knew this was going to be in a movie so this is Mattel's interpretation of the animal which for its time be before even this figure came out looked really good acted um, or I guess it portrayed a real Quetzalcoatlus very well I just think I prefer the newer one now so we'll take a look at like the heads. We'll compare the heads here. So yeah, the newer one has a much longer and larger head. Compare the other one. The other one's kind of more crane or stork-like, which I think is one of the references Mattel actually used to create this toy. Um, so yeah, the other one was a little bit more thinner um, compared to the other one. But they look nice, though. They look nice, but I prefer the other one. And here's another thing, too. Inside the mouth, the in the whole mouth is painted pink with the tongue there. And then the newer one actually does not have a full painted mouth, only the tongue. So, like, see up closer here, we can see the, the entire inside is pink, which uh, adds to more realism with these, with these figures. And then you compare it to the other one. Only the tongue is pink. The roof of the mouth or the bottom of the mouth is not painted. So um, Mattel probably gets the better points for their newer one. And here's like compared comparison to the crests. The older one was kind of like a classic Quetzalcoatlus crest for like a while. But this newer one I think is like a better representation of the real animal in my opinion. 
and then neck wise uh, their necks are different shapes and I would say the newer one has a probably more thicker neck than the other one and here's like the bodies the bodies at first I thought they were being like they were the same they might be the same but I think they might be slightly retold like here and there to fit certain mechanisms but um, the body doesn't really matter so I could really care less if it's the same mold or not and then uh the feet here the feet are actually different i thought they would be the same but if we compare them you can see them here the newer one has a little bit larger feet and longer claws and the older one has smaller feet with much more stubbier toe claws and one thing to notice here is that this one has a uh, more membrane flaps between the legs which i think is a lot more accurate in my opinion the newer one doesn't seem to have those, and I'm pretty sure it even has it in the movie. So that's pretty interesting that they didn't add that in there. So that's like one point for like the older one having something more accurate than the newer one. And then here we can compare kind of like the wings or in the arms. The older one had uh you can you can definitely tell that both arm like designs and forms are definitely a lot more different. The wings are kind of the same, are pretty much the same. Um, even towards like the tips of the wings, the newer one has a little bit more of a gap compared to the old one. Same thing with the hands. The hands on the newer one on the newer one are much more larger and have sharper claws than the older one. So yeah, there's actually a lot of differences here than I originally thought. I thought it was just the head and the colors that were going to be different. But no, there's there's some slight retools here and there. And then here we're going to compare um, kind of like wingspans. Not really wingspans, but kind of comparing like both of them with their wings open. So they're kind of similar. Um, I do like the colors of the old one. But the colors on the new one are probably a little bit more realistic and more natural. Plus, it's from the movie, so I probably like that one just a little bit more. Um, but they both uh, they both look cool together. It kind of shows the difference between Mattel's old creation and then their newest creation. And then here we can see them kind of like side by side. So yeah. Um, plus, the, the newer one did not have, or the older one, excuse me, did not have neck articulation. So its head is like permanently up. Whereas this one, you can actually pose it. And I do believe they're both the same size um, and length. So, uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. This is definitely a more superior Quetzalcoatlus figure than Mattel's older release. Um, I think uh, this Quetzalcoatlus is definitely... Um, one that everyone should have just because it's a little bit more accurate and it's the one from the movie. Um, the other one, older one, served me well. Um, it was definitely a really good Quetzalcoatlus for its time since Mattel made it and it was like my first Quetzalcoatlus figure in the Jurassic Park toy line. But I think the newer one definitely wins in terms of which one's the best. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and uh, I hope to uh, see you guys again in the next review. So, take care.